ONG TV, the official media channel partner for Gas Day. Well, joining me now on LNG TV is Maria Galli, who is the CEO of DESFRA. Um, Maria, I hope you're having a good gas tech. Why was it important that DESFRA were represented here? Well, Gastec is, uh, first of all, uh, the first uh, big uh, event after the pandemic and uh, is also a very important event when it comes uh, to talking about uh, technology and infrastructure. And being uh, an infrastructure company in Europe, which is today very much focused on, uh, let's say, our role in the energy transition space, uh, I thought it was very important to make sure that we were, uh, you know, having uh, the right level of exposure, but also opportunity to meet with partners, with peers, with many stakeholders with whom we hope to cooperate in the future. Because you're new to DESFRA, you only joined a CEO in the beginning of the year, in January. So um, what is it about the company or the opportunities that most excite you? Well, I joined the in January. I knew the Greek market, the Greek energy space since before. I think it's a, it's a very positive moment. And so it's a very positive moment also for me to be in this company because there is a lot of growth and transformation. Uh, we, are a co we are a company which uh, has a lot to deliver in the medium term in terms of uh, you know, connecting new areas of gas demand uh, to the grid because Greece is a country where uh, still uh, there used to be a lot of lignite power production and this is going to be very rapidly re replaced with natural gas, LNG, and also because uh, it's uh, a company that um, together with many European peers, uh, will be very much involved uh, in the near future in the space of uh, transporting decarbonized gases. So I thought it was a, a great opportunity also to contribute to the success of the decarbonization of the Mediterranean countries. Yeah, how important is gas and LNG to, to, to Greece and to DEFSRA? Well, uh, let's say to DESFA, by definition, we are a natural gas infrastructure company and uh, LNG is one of our main import infrastructure. We have a large regasification terminal, which represents, uh, let's say, uh, 8 BCM. So it's more or less, uh, the, the can potentially cover 100% of the gas demand. Of course, it's also used to export to neighboring country. Gas today is crucial for Greece and LNG, of course, as a source of gas for the country because, uh, in general, Greece and the, no and the Balkan are going through a, a very fast decarbonization. So there is the need uh, to replace base load uh, that was produced by coal with natural gas. And gas is also the natural partner of renewables because we uh, see CGTs and gas pipelines are uh, the partner that enable uh, the volatile uh, renewable uh, sources, uh, wind and solar, to be integrated in an, a stable and reliable system. So we see ourselves uh, and we see natural gas uh, really as the partner to increase the renewable penetration and uh, to foster the decarbonization, accelerate the decarbonization uh, uh, through replacement of the existing lignite uh, uh, terminals, plants. So. And, and where does hydrogen fit in with the, with the plans moving forward? Well, let's say, first of all, um, we, and as part of, uh, let's say, we have been working together with many European associations, Gas for Climate, Hydrogen Europe, Hydrogen Backbone, um, and there is uh, one uh, very strong view that molecules are needed to meet the targets of the decarbonization of 2050 for Europe. Uh, because there are sectors of the energy which cannot be served with electrons. And so we need to have uh, different energy vectors. We need to have uh, electrons and molecules. Molecules cannot be the one of today and of the past. They need to be decarbonized. And hydrogen is uh, today the solution that will help the decarbonization of the gas sector. And we think uh, that, uh, let's say, the great advantage that Europe has uh, is the possibility to lever on a very extensive network of uh, infrastructure. Europe has uh, 260,000 kilometers of high and medium pressure pipelines that can be not only easily reconverted in the mid-term to transport hydrogen, but in a first phase can uh, accommodate the blending of uh, hydrogen, biomethane, and traditional methane, and therefore help hydrogen take off, uh, you know, supporting also the economics uh, of uh, a, 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 an opportunity that is still in its infant, infancy today and need a lot of support uh, from uh, European institutions.
Where does Greece sit in um, the, uh, what, what are the characteristics of the, the Greek energy market or where it's positioned and compared to the rest of Europe, what is, what are the, what, where, where is Greece in that in the uh, Greece sense? Greece is, uh, is a country that is uh, at the crossroad of uh, many import routes, so in a way it's a uh, it's not a, it used to be not as big market is growing quite rapidly with the increasing demand for power generation but most importantly uh, it's a country that uh, is critical also to connect uh, and, uh, and diversify the supply routes for uh, the Balkan peninsula uh, Greece uh, is today crossed by pa an intercon a large scale project, which is TAP, that enables gas from Azerbaijan to reach, uh, uh, let's say, the Balkans and Italy, but also through the LNG terminal of Revitusa and the newly planned LNG terminal of Alexandropolis. And our pipeline system is an entry door uh, for uh, Bulgaria, North Macedonia in the near future, Romania, Serbia, to have access uh, to diversified sources of supply and, in particular, to have access to LNG. So, so Greece is almost um, it, where it's positioned and it's, it's sort of, it can help link East and West Europe. Yes, it's really at the crossroad between East and West and uh, as uh, really it's the hub for Southeastern Europe uh, and also with the launch of the trading platform for natural gas later this year we think that uh, this role of, of uh, a Southeastern European hub will consolidate and grow. Because there have been well, sizable gas discoveries offshore, Cyprus and Israel, Egypt is emerging as a um, key producer and LNG exporter. Um, we know energy can transform economies, but can it help bring neighbours close together, particularly in that, that region? Well, uh, uh, let's say th there is uh, one way of, of saying that, uh, let's say, energy needs diplomacy, but also that uh, energy helps diplomacy. Uh, these large discoveries, uh, uh, of course, uh, need a market. And now the big question mark is uh, what is the, the most easily reachable market and what are the infrastructure that are better suited to enable these gas discoveries to reach the market. There are many projects being analyzed uh, from the direct connection of Israel uh, to offshore uh, East Med pipeline to Greece uh, or uh, to bring these discoveries uh, to Egypt and then via LNG again uh, back to Europe and Greece as well, which is very close, so has a quite significant logistic advantage. Whatever will be the final solution, uh, uh, this uh, um, abundant availability of natural gas is bringing these countries uh, to work together and to discuss how really uh, these uh, discoveries can contribute to the economy of those countries and to the general target of decarbonization. Let's not forget that North Africa, Egypt has a very growing population with a great need for energy and therefore these discoveries are also crucial to support the economy of the let's say, north, southern part of the Mediterranean basin. Let's hope so. Thank you so much for joining us here on LNG TV. Enjoy the rest of Gas Tech and it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you very much.